Hey guys, what's going on? It's Gunner here. Welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I want to thank you for the last couple of videos I put out and, and the love that I've been getting on on those two. You know, I really appreciate you guys giving your feedback to me, um, commenting, sharing your support for you know the growth of the, of the channel where where we're headed with this thing. Um, I, I just wanted to take a second and thank you guys for that. But I also wanted to go in and, and tell you that I'm not owned by anybody. You know, the things that I talk about are the things that I actually use, um, what I found that works, what I implement on my own properties, what I use when I'm actually hunting in the stand just like you guys. So I just wanted to make that clear and, and know that I'm not bought and paid for by anybody. I, I actually use the stuff that I talk about. I, I share what I know works, what I um, understand and what I believe to be the right thing uh, when it comes to uh, the different situations that we're dealing with. But I wanted to talk to, to you guys today about some trail camera setups. Now, I've been running trail cameras for a long time. You know, every, every since I, I started hunting, you know, as a young kid, I've been fascinated with getting photos of large bucks. So as you can imagine, I kind of grew up in the technology age. So I'm, I'm pretty handy when it comes to using trail cameras and cell cams and, and whatever type of camera it may be. But, and it, at the end of the day, that's my job. I run a, I run a camera for uh, part of my living. So I'm pretty good with this stuff, but I wanted to talk a little bit about how I use my trail cameras and how I go about that. Now, I like to get my cameras high. Now, I don't want cameras near deer eyesight level whatsoever. I even like to use the topography to my advantage when, say, I'm in a steep side hill and I've got a trail down below me. I'll go even six, seven feet up on the tree when it's above grade of where that trail is even. So I like to get them high and I don't want the deer to even know that their photo's getting taken. Now, you'll see a lot of guys where They'll stick a, a, a post in the middle of a food plot, set their camera up with a big solar panel on it so they never have to go in there and change batteries or any of this, and the deer don't care. Now, I'm going to say that that probably is not going to work for you in your state. Guys, it's gonna look. A lot of you guys have been talking to me, telling me how you need help. Well, I wanna talk to you today about whitetail coaching. One-on-one -on -one virtual coaching with me We'll go in depth on whatever problems, whatever help you need, we'll find the solution you're looking for. Shoot me a text, 608-632-7233. 608-632-7233. I got your back for life. Now let's get back to the video. The areas that a setup like that will work are low deer hunter pressure states, high deer density, and they can get away with things like that because the deer just don't care. Now, when we're talking about in Wisconsin here, or Michigan, or Ohio, New York, any of these states that are high hunter number states, the deer are not gonna tolerate things like that. So what I've come to learn is I used to, I used to do similar things. I used to stick a stake in a food plot and I was fascinated to figure out that I'll get one photo sequence of a, a big mature buck coming up and sniffing that camera and I'll never see him again. So. That kind of leads me into the story of what I kind of wanted to talk about here today is I'm in a, a little swale here, a good neck down or pinch point is what you call it, but I've got a deep ditch running down through here. Now, I've got to stand on this top right here at the top of this bowl where this ditch flattens out. Now, the deer love to come cross high. Bucks, when they're cruising, they come above this bedding area. They've got a west wind coming up and they're circling this bedding area and coming where it's easy crossing at the top of this ditch. Now we've got a perfect rut cruising stand here, but I had a camera in here, I'm trying to think, it was two years ago I believe, but I had a camera in here, it was sitting on this young black walnut here in front of me, and there was a good trail coming down right in front of this stand, right in front of this camera, I had 10, 12 yards between the camera and the trail, and I had it high but it's a lone black walnut and there's not a lot of cover around it. So I went ahead and I slapped it up and I had pictures all year. Now, when it came to hunting season, I didn't have a lot of big buck pictures or 
or pictures in general. I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, I know this spot is producing. I know it's a good deer spot. I know there's big bucks cruising through here because there always is. But I couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting the, the photos that I thought I should be. So come down to it. I ended up sitting this stand one day during the rut and I had a doe family group come in. I wanna say it was late October. I had a doe family group coming up this logging road to me. Now, they got to about 25 yards. It was dead calm. There wasn't a lot of wind and it was just very quiet in the timber. Now, I wasn't moving. I'm tucked into this batch of pine trees here. They had no idea I was here. But the lead doe, the mom doe, got to about 15 yards from that camera just within trigger range and all I heard was click from that camera and that stopped her in her track she looked directly at that camera and she looped all the way around the camera and went down behind me now with a west wind you can imagine that's not a good situation for me hunting this spot now they never busted me but they also didn't like something in the area so they knew something was up because they were downwind now that's kind of what I wanted to talk about is it doesn't take much when it comes to spooking deer with a trail camera. Now, I like to use cell cams, the reveals, as a lot of you guys I think probably do as well. And you know, I, I'm a big fan of these cameras. I really like them. But there's one downfall that I've found when it comes to them. It's they do make a little bit of a click when they take a photo. So these cameras are great, but you have to take that into consideration. You have to give them a little bit of distance so Maybe the deer are not right on top of them and it clicks right in their ear hole. You know, you have to give them a little bit of distance. And at the same time, you wanna make sure these cameras are tucked in and hidden. So my situation here with this young black walnut is that's just not enough cover. With, with it being the only tree right next to that logging road, that's not enough cover. She was able to pick that camera out when she heard that click. And with it being dead calm, she did not like it. Now after I saw that whole scenario play out where she took her fawns and went completely around that camera, I started looking and I made eye contact with a trail that had been beaten out. Now, there has never been a trail there prior to when this camera was set. There was always a trail right here and that's the only one that came down through here on this neck down. They had carved out a completely new trail behind my stand setup because of how long that camera had been soaking there and making that click because they knew it was there and they did not like it. They wanted to come through here, but that click was deterring them from crossing there because they know and they found out, they learned that every time they step there, that camera makes a click and they don't like that. They don't know what it is, but they don't like it. So she backed off, she went completely around and I just removed the camera from here. I do not want deer completely altering their route to go around my setup and actually get downwind to me because there's a camera there. I'll, I'll take my chances on not knowing the deer that are in the area if I can avoid that situation. Now, I'm gonna try to alleviate that this year. I'm gonna try to distance the camera a little bit from this pinch point where I want the deer to come. Maybe I'll go farther down the trail, give them a little bit more room to adapt to where this camera is, you know, making that click, or else I'll just completely find a new camera that doesn't. But I've had good luck with these cameras. Now I'm not affiliated with these guys at all, but I just like to share what works for me and what I like to use and, and potentially the downfalls from it. I'm trying to not sell you guys something, but I'm trying to inform you guys of something that I've learned when it comes to actually using these cams. But on the other hand, sometimes, you know, me not being a tall guy, I can't reach up on a, on a tree and when I'm going into the woods and I'm trying to hang a camera, I can't exactly get it in the spot that I want. So I like to use these, these tree pegs that you just screw into the tree and you screw that camera on top. Now you can find these anywhere, Walmart, I think I bought these, and they're not too expensive and it doesn't matter the brand that you use, but all these trail cameras nowadays, they have that, that I think it's a 3 8 thread at the bottom. Now you can screw that camera on, get it up nice and high. Maybe you go in there in the summer, you take a step ladder with you and you get these pegs in the tree. So when you come in, you just reach up, screw that camera on, you're good to go. That's what I've been using lately. I've been liking those a lot, but 
that just helps me get these cameras at the highest point possible that I can still reach and get that screwed on there, but at the same time, keep them away from deer. So they have that distance. They don't feel pressured when I go in there and get a picture of them. They, they don't even see that camera right at head height. You know, that's the last thing I wanna do is have a buck come into a trail and he gets a snap right in his ear hole. He has no idea what's going on and he completely busts out of there. And at the same time, you have to remember in these high pressure states, these deer have associated by now human scent around trail camera location. So any camera that makes any form of noise or gives you a glow of any sort, these deer are gonna go up, they're gonna get curious, they're gonna sniff them, and if they detect any sort of human scent on there, they're gonna associate that with human pressure. And at the end of the day, when it gets to the guns banging here in Wisconsin during the gun season, they're going nowhere near human scent. That is one thing that I really wanna get across to you guys is you cannot afford to leave your scent all over your trail camera setups because deer are just gonna get accustomed to that. And if you're anything like my situation, they're gonna carve a trail completely behind your setup and avoid that camera altogether. So when it comes to trail camera setups, if they're not hung properly, if they're not hidden properly, and if they're making any form of disturbance really, that's gonna minimize the photos that you get on that said camera. So when it comes to the location that I like to hang these cameras, I like to focus a lot on mock scrapes or, or areas that a deer is distracted when I'm taking their photo. Maybe it's a transition area going out to an ag field where they just got done feeding on a food plot and they're going. Not someplace that they're isolated and they're neck down here where I actually wanna come in and kill these deer. I don't wanna add any sort of pressure into that area because this actually screwed me over pretty heavy because when I came in here to hunt this trail, this specific buck cruising trail, I had no idea that the does were looping completely around because they didn't like the scenario. So if a buck had been coming in, he would have come behind me downwind and I would have never gotten a shot at him. So that's one thing you need to be aware of. Hide your trail cameras, check them out, make sure that they're not flashing in a deer's face or that the deer are picking them out really easy on a lone tree. Make sure you get these cameras hidden. Keep them a good distance away from your stand locations, especially in these neck down pinch points where you want deer to walk and you don't want any disturbance. You want them to feel like they're not being hunted here at all. You know, you can get your pictures elsewhere and get your inventory is like, I like to call it, but you can get that inventory elsewhere where you don't need to go and be super intrusive on these really good rut cruising trails and actually harm your setup for when you come in and hunt them next fall.